in this flask, I know that there could be some concentrated sulfuric acid still left in there. I also know that there might be some leftover, either leftover alcohol or leftover carboxylic acid. But I do know that I did add a little bit more carboxylic acid than alcohol, which means that in this flask there is sulfuric acid and our original propanoic acid, which I want to get rid of. So I want to neutralize this um, uh, mixture by adding some sodium carbonate solution to it. Now carbonates will form bubbles when they're added to acidic mixtures. So this means that I need to keep adding carbonate into my flask until I stop seeing bubbles appear. So we're going to go ahead and keep doing that. And this just helps neutralize it. And you'll also notice that as I'm adding more carbonate, it's bubbling from the bottom. And that's because I know that esters are non-polar, which means that they don't actually mix in with water. And the sodium carbonate solution I'm adding is actually a solution which is mainly water. So I expect my sodium carbonate solution to actually sink to the bottom as it's reacting, while my ester just floats on top. So you should see two layers forming in this flask right now. Just to move things along a bit, I can already smell something coming out from the flask and it smells like a really intense mixture of apple and pineapple. My ester layer, as I said, I expect to be on the top while my aqueous layer, which contains some of the um, water from my sodium carbonate, will be in the bottom. I also expect anything like the propanoate ions to be in there as well, because those are polar. It's a, um, it's a ion. So we're going to go ahead and now separate the layers. And to do that, I can use this device here called a separating funnel. All I have to do is just remove the cork at the top, and we're going to fill this up with all of the contents in this flask. And a separating funnel does exactly what it says, it separates things. It's going to separate in this case one layer from another. I know my esters at the top layer because it's less dense than water. This means I need to get rid of the bottom layer. So I'm just going to open this tap and just drain off the bottom layer. There. And now this means that everything that I have left in this separating funnel should be the ester that I want. If I am completely worried that there might still be a small amount of water, I can add um, some anhydrous magnesium sulfate. And the key word here is the fact that we have something that's anhydrous. That means it's completely dry. And the goal of something like anhydrous magnesium sulfate is just to really get in there and soak up any additional water that might be left. And then all you have to do after that is use a bit of filter paper and a funnel and just extract your ester and filter off the solid and that will just help you make sure that what you've got is indeed the ester that is left. To uh, collect your ester in the end. The other disadvantage of this reaction is that it's also quite slow. Notice that even though I've had all my reactants and products in my flask, it's still a still a mixture as if like nothing had actually happened. It just looks like water to me. Over on this side,